All right. So I'm going to jump into the micro level here. So we're going to start off with some basic building blocks. So the first item would be the use of images and rectangles and how it affects the structure of buttons, inputs, and cards, right? So over here, you can see that we have a button and there is a rectangle over here, as you can see, with a text, which is the button text and it is grouped together with a group. So this is the group icon over here. Now, the first thing that we want to actually consider is that, is this rectangle actually supposed to be a rectangle or is this kind of a container? So in this case, you might intuitively think that as a button, this orange background here is actually the container for the text inside. In which case, this rectangle wouldn't actually be the correct representation of what we think of intuitively. In addition, you will notice that in this button over here, there are three layers, whereas in the best practice button, which I'll be sharing with you how we can achieve this, you can see that there are two layers. So this is also going to affect the code output because Locofy, as I mentioned earlier on, reads your layer structure. And we are going to assume that you actually are looking for a container instead of a rectangle over here. Okay, so one more thing is that the advantage of having it in this format with a frame in auto layout with text inside is that it's actually responsive to your text to different contents. So for example, I can change this to contact us and you can see that our button is automatically resizing. Whereas if we try to edit the text over here, you can see that our design is not actually responding because this rectangle is kind of a separate layer from the text and not acting as a container. So this also is going to help you to structure your Figma design to design even more easily. Right, so let's go through a couple of ways that you can actually convert this layer structure Right, so this layer structure into this layer structure. And I'm going to be showing you three different ways to do it. First, let's look at how you can build this from scratch. So for example, if you are working with a new design, let's start off by drawing a frame, which is going to be the container. Okay, this is great. Now we might want to give this a fill. So let's grab this fill color here and paste it. Let's add the fill. Next, we might want a corner radius. So let's grab the corner radius, which is nine. Let's put that in here. And now that we have constructed our frame, let's also add our text inside. So I'll add a text layer and position it inside. Now that we have this as a frame with our text inside, we can add the auto layout property. Perfect. So now, as you can see, when I type inside here, our button is going to resize accordingly. So that is the first way which I have shared with you, which is to build it from scratch. So if you are working with a new design, we recommend that you do this from the very beginning. Now, let me show you the second way, which is going to be faster. For example, you already have this existing. Here's how you can do it. Let's draw a frame. Now, what you can do is you can actually click on this. Let's click on the rectangle. And we are going to want to copy a couple of properties. Things like fill, border radius. If you have stroke or effects, we can copy everything at once simply by right-clicking over here. Heading to copy properties. You can also use the shortcut. Now let's find our frame. Right-click. And let's paste the properties. There we go. So you can see that we have done all of those steps in one go by pasting the properties. Now we can simply copy the text over and with this frame, apply auto layout. Great, perfect. So now we have done it in two different ways. Let me show you the third way. By the way, this second way is actually the foolproof way. I'm going to be showing you the third way. So let's make a copy of it. Now we're going to make use of a Figma function over here. 
So if you notice the layer structure, we have the group, text, and button. Let's see what happens when I directly apply auto layout. Ta-da, as you can see, we have the structure now in our ideal structure, which is the auto layout frame and text. So as you can see, Figma also understands that this is a better layer structure, a best practice layer structure. So this is what we are trying to achieve. And for most of the cases where you have something simple like this, once again, you can just simply copy it uh, and apply auto layout and it will help you to do everything. Okay. In the cases where this doesn't work, you can always resort back to the second option, which I'll show you. So this is going to be our button. Now let's see what happens when we tag the button. So let's fire up the local file plugin. Great. So remember how we want this button to be an actual working button. Let me show you how we can do that. Simply select the layer, then come over here. Here's where we indicate what kind of element we want to generate the code as. Let's select button. Here you can choose the UI library that you are using. In this case, it's a custom design. So we'll go ahead with none. Great. So here you can add any basic and advanced attributes if required. Next, here is the styling and layouts tab where you can take care of different media queries, your responsiveness basically, and your button, how your button is going to look across different screen sizes on things like 1200 screen size for desktops, tablets, and mobiles on 4 to 8. Here you can also see that we can take care of the different states of the button, like normal states, hover states, press states, and so on. In this case, let's go ahead and add a hover state for this button. So we can change this fill color, for example, and that's it. So now we have added a hover state. In the final tab, which is the actions tab, here you can add actions and take care of user flows, such as change page, you know, scrolling to a different part of the page and so on. In this case, we have just the button here. So I'll show you maybe about the linking in a later section. Awesome. So now we are done with tagging the button. Our AI has detected some similar buttons. We'll ignore them for now. So here, as you can see, I previewed this and you'll notice that our button is now working with the hover effects as how we have set it up. Perfect. So this is how you can actually set up your button with the best practices. Let's have a look at another element, which is the input element. Once again, this follows a very similar concept as previously. So you can see that we have created a rectangle with text inside, and then we have grouped them together. So we want to reduce the number of layers and turn it into something like this, where we have our input as a auto layout frame with the email text inside. So let's go ahead and do that. If you recall, I showed you three steps just now. Let's do the foolproof step first. So simply draw a frame. Then we want to copy all of the properties of our rectangle. In this case, we have a stroke as well, border radius and color. So we'll go ahead and copy all of the properties and then paste it inside of our frame. Perfect. Now we'll add our text inside and we can apply auto layout. Now you'll notice that Figma has tried to keep the padding same on the left and right, which is why it has shrunk this frame. All you have to do is to simply bring it back to its original size. And that's it. So now we have converted it into our best practice structure. Now let's see if we can use the third option, which was simply to apply auto layout directly. So I'll make a duplicate of this. And you can see here that as I click on add auto layout, it's automatically going to do the same thing. And we can have this just like this. All right, now let's go ahead and tag this as an input to see how it works. So one thing to note is that Locofy is going to pick up the padding settings on your input. 
So this is our auto layout frame. You can see that we have some padding on the left and on the top, bottom and on the right. So when we tag it as an input, this is a custom design. So we click on none. Let's run a preview. You can see here that it's going to respect the padding that you have set around. So I could say Isaac Gideon, for example, from local file. All right. Now, one thing to note is that when you are building a custom input like this, to be careful that you do not have a very large padding on the right. So Locofy is actually also going to respect this padding that you have added. So in this case, what you'll notice is that when I preview, the part which you can actually write in is going to be constrained to the part that is within the padding. So that's just something to note uh, when you are actually creating your custom inputs. So I'm going to bring that back. Great. So here we have covered the usage of rectangles in buttons and the usage of rectangles in inputs. Now let's look at the usage of images, for example, in a component like a card. So here we have a card with some text inside and we have an image. So let's look at the layer structure. We have a rectangle image over here with a image fill. Here we have another layer, which is kind of this transparent layer just to make the text more readable. And then finally, we have the text as well. So as you can see, we have four layers over here. And this is going to actually generate more lines of code as opposed to our layer structure here with just two layers. So how can we reduce the number of layers on our design? Well, first thing we can do is that instead of adding an additional layer of this transparent layer, what we can do is that we can actually grab this fill. So I've selected the fill and I'm going to click on copy. And I can paste this on top of this rectangle with the image. So I'm going to paste the fill. And you can see that we have multiple layers of fill. So I have the added opacity 20% black layer added on top of the image. And in this case, now I would no longer require this additional rectangle form. So I've deleted that. And you can see we have the exact same design, but now with one fewer layer. Now, if you recognize this design by now, you could probably guess that what we could do is we could grab this and simply apply auto layout. Oh, that didn't work. So that is uh, the one of the reasons why that is the third option. Sometimes Figma is not going to accurately detect how to convert this into a auto layout frame with text inside. Whenever that happens, you can always revert back to method number two, which is to simply create your frame, come inside here, copy all the properties, and then paste your properties inside here. Great. Then we can grab this. And there we go. Let's apply auto layout and resize our card. And that's it. So now we have converted it into our best practice layer structure.